Good morning and happy Sunday. It, um, I'm recording on a Friday today and it is blustery and yucky outside and so I decided that it was a good day to get cozy. So I hope you guys can come and get cozy with me as we hear from Jesus. But before we do, let's pray. Close your eyes, fold your hands, let's go before the throne. Jesus, thank you so much for this day. Thank you for each one of the kids who are listening, who are going to hear your story today. Jesus, I pray that you'd give us ears to really hear your heart for us, that it wouldn't just be a story, but that we would know this is the truth. You really did these things. You really said these things, and you really are still saying them to us today because of the great love that you have for us. Jesus, help us to follow you. Help us to love you because you first loved us. We love you, Jesus, and we thank you. In his name, everybody said, amen. All right, so we are going to dive into our Bible verse today. And I actually, I needed some help this week coming up with a fun way to memorize our Bible verse. And so I actually asked Miss Cassara if she had any ideas. And this is the one that she came up with. She said that for her and for her kids, one way for them to memorize scripture is to use music and hand motions. And so that is what we're going to do today. Our memory verse is Mark 10, 45, and it says, For the Son of Man didn't come to be served, but to serve and to give himself up as a ransom for many. So in that verse, you guys might have heard, there are several times that you hear something that could be used as a number, right? The word two or the word four, and so that's what we're going to do today. So every time you hear the word two, I want you to go two. Every time I, you hear the word four, I want you to go four. And then we're also going to do the numbers five, because that's part of the verse, and ten. All right? So this is how it's going to go. Are you ready for this? For the Son of Man didn't come to be served, but to serve and to give his life a ransom for many. Mark 10, 45. All right, can you guys do that with me? Did you get that? Remember the numbers 2, 4, 5, and 10. Ready? For the Son of Man didn't come to be served, but to serve and to give his life a ransom for many. Mark 10, 45. Okay, let's do it one more time as fast as we possibly can. Are you guys ready? For the Son of Man didn't come to be served, but to serve and to give his life a ransom for many. Mark 10, 45. Awesome. All right. Good job, you guys. I would love to hear you saying your memory verse. So if you want to this week, go ahead, have your parents help you record it and send it in. Do it in the most creative way you want to say it. And let's hear as God plants his word deep, deep, deep in our hearts. All right. We're going to dive into our story in just a minute. Um, before we do, I want to ask you guys, in our memory verse today, we heard, we are hearing that Jesus didn't come to be served, but to serve. And I want to ask you guys, what does it mean to serve? And why do we serve? You guys think about it as we go. And I want to know if at the end of today, you understand a little bit more about what it means to serve. All right, I'm going to get cozy. You guys get cozy and meet me back here for our Bible story. All right, are you comfy? Are you cozy? Uh, in our story today, Jesus is not comfy or cozy. Are you guys ready for this? Let's pray one more time. Jesus, thank you so much that you were willing to be uncomfortable for us. Thank you for loving us that much. Thank you for your heart to serve us by giving up your life. Jesus, would you give us ears to hear your heart today? Help us to know that you are the way and the truth and the life, and help us to follow in your footsteps, not to be served, but to serve. 
because you served us first. We love you, Jesus. In your name, everybody said amen. So you guys might remember last week as Jesus and his disciples were getting ready to go out on a journey, a young rich man came and fell at Jesus' feet. Jesus' journey got interrupted. Well, today, he and his disciples finally are getting to go out on their journey. And the Bible says in Mark 10, chapter 32, that as Jesus and his disciples were on the road, they were going up to Jerusalem. Now, I got to tell you guys something. This is the very last time that Jesus, well, not the very last time, the very last time while Jesus was on earth the first time, it was the very last time that Jesus would go up to Jerusalem. And what we know is that as Jesus went, every step he took, he knew he was getting closer and closer to being arrested and closer and closer to being put up on the cross uh, for our sins. And so every step he took, Jesus knew he was getting closer to that. And the Bible even tells us that his disciples, they were amazed. They were in awe of him as he went. And others who were following him, they were afraid. This is a scary thing. Have you guys ever thought about that? The crucifixion, Jesus' death, was a scary thing. There were so many people who had all of their hope in Jesus, and they did not realize that he was going to rise again. And so they thought when he died, that was the end of their hope. And, and crucifixions were mean, horrible things. It was the worst possible way that you could die. And they were afraid. Well, Jesus, as he was walking on the road with his disciples, he pulled his 12 disciples aside. You guys, come here. I need to tell you something. And they had heard a lot of beautiful things come out of Jesus' mouth. They'd heard a lot of things come out of his mouth that they didn't understand. <laughs> Remember the, the parable of the wheat? There were so many things that they didn't understand, and they had heard things that they didn't like. Well, Jesus was about to share something really serious with them. He said, behold, look, you guys, we, you and me, we are going up to Jerusalem and the son of man, who's the son of man? Jesus, the son of man, he is going to be delivered to the chief priests and the scribes. They will condemn him to death. They will deliver him to the Gentiles. They will mock him. They will spit on him. They will scourge. That means whip. They will whip him and they will kill him. And three days later, he will rise again. There was a lot of ands in that. And this will happen. And this will happen. And this will happen. You guys, can you imagine the disciples just getting more and more and more overwhelmed? Have you ever had your parents say, and we're going to do this, and we're going to do this, and we're going to do this, like on a day that you um, are cleaning your house? All right, kids. First, I want you to clean your room. And then I want you to put all your laundry in the laundry room. And then I want you to help me clean the kitchen. And then I want you to water the plants. And then, and by the time that you've heard the end of the story you're like, or of your mom's direction, you're like, oh my gosh, oh, and what? And then what, mom? And you probably missed that at the very end, she said, and then we're going to build a fort and have popcorn and watch a movie. You know, we, we think about all of these things that we have to get done and, 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 and how hard it's going to be. And we miss the end. And that's probably what a lot of the disciples did. They missed the fact that at the very end of what Jesus said, after all of those things, after him being put to death, after him being whipped and spit on, then he was going to rise again. Well, I want to ask you guys something else. First, I want to tell you, do you realize how brave, how courageous Jesus was as he walked up to Jerusalem? He was. Not only was he going to suffer this physical, horrible death, horrible, but he was also walking every step he took. He was closer and closer and closer to taking on all of the sin of all of the world. But Jesus did it. He 
is so courageous. The Bible tells us he is a valiant warrior. And I believe in that moment, all of Jesus being a valiant warrior, that was every step that he took because he knew he was going to fight and win for you and for me. Well, not only was Jesus so very, very, very brave, he was also joyful. I want you guys, imagine with me, if you can, if Jesus, before he went to the cross, if he was really grumpy about it. Have you ever been grumpy about a chore that you need to do or something that you need to do for somebody and you really don't want to do it? Sometimes I get really grumpy and I, grrr, I grumble about this and I grumble about that and I might even, you know, smack something down on the counter when I'm cleaning up the kitchen. Oh, I can't believe it. I gotta do these dishes again. Can you imagine if Jesus did that as he was getting ready to go to Jerusalem, as he was walking up to Jerusalem? If he had been grumpy, how would that make you feel? If he said, here, I came to save you. It's not how Jesus was at all. Jesus, as he went to the cross, he was brave and courageous, and he did it, the Bible says, full of joy for the hope set before him. The hope that is that you will receive him into your heart and have a relationship with him forever. He went with joy and with hope. He was serving us. Remember, the Son of Man didn't come to be served, but to serve, that is exactly what Jesus was doing. And he did it with a heart full of love, full of courage, full of hope for you. That is what he did. While he finished telling the disciples these things, and two of the disciples, James and John, they were brothers they came up to Jesus and they said, Jesus, teacher, we want to ask you to do something for us and you have to say you'll do it. Promise us you'll do whatever it is that we ask. <laughs> Jesus said, what do you want me to do for you? I think he knew what was coming. They said to him, when you have risen again, when you're in glory, promise us that one of us will get to sit on your right hand side. and One of us will get to sit on your left. They were saying, we want to be the first ones in your kingdom. We deserve that. We want this spot, Jesus. What do you guys think Jesus said? He said to them, to sit at my right and on my left, that's not mine to give. But it's for those for whom it has been prepared. Jesus was saying, he's still talking about how he's in the role of that servant He's saying, I am not in charge. I am going to do this. And my father, he is the one who is in charge. But he had something in that moment to teach the disciples. The Bible says that the 10, the other 10 disciples, they overheard James and John. They found out what they were saying and they were angry with them. Why would they be angry, do you think? Have you ever been frustrated with a brother or a sister when you hear them trying to get like something special from your parents and you're like, wait, 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 what about me? I want something special. That's what the disciples were doing. And so Jesus, instead of sometimes how parents will be like, you guys cut it out. Jesus called the disciples to himself. The Bible says, and he said to them, this is not the way. It is not this way with us. For you guys, my disciples, who have said you want to follow me, for us, if you want to be great, you must become a servant. He said, whoever wishes to be the very first will be last. For, and this is our Bible verse, even the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life a ransom for many. You guys, did Jesus deserve to be first? He did. Why? Because he is God. He is the Son of Man. And if anyone deserved to be first, it is him. Another question for you. Did Jesus deserve to die? He didn't. The Bible tells us he is God and he was without sin. When he went to the cross, he went for your sin, for my sin, for the sin of all 
of the world. He was taking on our sin. And he said, even me, even the son of man didn't come to be served. He deserved it, right? We say we want to serve God and Jesus is God. So Jesus, he could have said, you must serve me. He said, instead, the son of man came to serve. Can you guys tell me, we've been talking about it already. What was Jesus' greatest act of service? Going to the cross for our sins. And he did it because he loves us. True love, you guys, is serving. True love is laying down our own lives for the lives of those around us. That might mean giving up a toy that we want the most because we know that it will mean something. It will mean love to someone else to get to play with it. It might mean giving up the front seat in the car when it's our turn to sit in the front seat. It might mean being the first one to get dinner, giving that up and going last so that someone else in your family can go first. It might mean a lot of different things. But you want to know something? Jesus said, whoever, whoever wishes to be the first among you will be the last. And what he really was saying is, you guys, disciples, and you guys listening today, humble yourselves before God and with each other. Because that is the true measure of love. And that is what Jesus did for us. When he was warning those disciples ahead of time, he was warning them, I'm going to be arrested. I'm going to be beaten. I'm going to be whipped. I'm going to be spit upon. I am going to die for you. And then I'm going to rise again. Because that is where the hope is. And so we know, you guys, if we lay down our lives for our friends, if we lay down our lives for our family, if we lay down our lives for our enemies, Jesus did all of those things. He promises us. He promises us that there will be new life for us. You know, I was looking in my notes over the last couple of weeks, and I was thinking that it's really interesting. Jesus kind of does something with us, and he's been doing something with us. A couple of weeks ago, the first thing we heard is that we need to be like little children. You and me, we are kids, right? We are his kids. And he says, I want you to have faith like a child. Trust me like I am your father. Trust me like you are my child. And then he says, as my child, give up the riches of the world because I have an inheritance for you. Remember? That's what he was, he was teaching the rich young man. Give all of this up because what I have in store for you is so much better. Remember, we learned Jesus is our treasure. So he said, faith like a child, be a little child, come to me. As my child, know I am preparing treasures for you in heaven and I am your treasure, so let this world go. And now he's saying, as my children, follow in the footsteps of your father and serve the world around you. Because you wanna know what? Jesus, he did all of those things. He came as a child. He trusted his father no matter what. He gave up all of heaven so that he could come to earth for you. He gave up all of his riches, all of his glory for us. Knowing that there was a treasure that was coming, a relationship with you that was even better. And he came to serve and gave up his life as a ransom for yours and for mine. And you know what? As his followers, as his kids, we can do the same thing. Let's pray. Jesus, I thank you for your word. And I thank you for the love that you have for us. Jesus, I pray that each and every one of us would know today that you came for us. You came for each child listening you gave up your glory in heaven and you came to earth as a child for each kid listening, for me. You gave up all of the riches for each child listening, for me. And you served throughout your whole ministry 
and you served on the cross by dying for our sins and then rising again for each child and for me. Jesus, would you work in our hearts so that like you, we can serve? Would you work in our hearts so that like you, we would become the very least? We would decide to go last because of your love in our hearts. Jesus, I pray that each one of us would be willing to lay down those things that we want in order, Lord, to do what you want, because what you want is to love. Would you help us become and reflect you, not become you, would you help us reflect you to this world, that they would know that you the Son of Man didn't come to be served by them, but to serve them and to lay down your life as a ransom for theirs. Jesus, I pray that there would be people, kids listening today who would hear that you came to lay down your life for them. And Father, I pray that they would choose to believe you for the very first time and know that you did that because you long to have a relationship with them. We thank you, Jesus. We love you so much. In your name, everybody said, amen. amen. I love you guys so much. I love you, I love you, I love you. And even more than that, Jesus loves you. And my prayer this week is that you would know the height and the depth and the width and the breadth of his love for you. I'll see you next week.